Caddis Maximus here. This time with the review of the Through Night TN42 version 2. So, Through Night uh, for diligently shilling their flashlights sent me a Christmas gift early. And that Christmas gift, as we can see by the heavy duty packaging, is uh, one of their top end flashlights. This is their huge 4x21700 cell. Uh, apparently one mile throw flashlight let's get that peel off of there as we can see this has a massive lens and if we I'm gonna zoom in just a bit here you can see that the LED is some kind of interesting all-metal chip based one and so that's kind of the deal is this has a very special uh, LED in it with a big parabolic reflector Gives you a ton of reach, rated at 4,800 lumens, but all concentrated down to a spot. Anyway, other stuff besides the little bag, we got our little manual, uh, the obligatory, uh, make sure it's screwed in tight. They does come with a USB-C charger, although I am going to critique them a little bit. The issue with this USB-C charger, a uh, little flip out pug, a little hard to access, but the issue with this is come on now they must have changed it uh, and I didn't previously look at this here let me zoom in a little bit tighter so I can actually read it 5 volts at 5 amps it's a 25 watt charger it used to come with a 2 amp charger they got a lot of criticism online because it was taking like 8 hours to charge the battery but now we can see that they've upgraded this thing to a 5 amp charger which is uh, it's only 5 volts but that's 25 watts, so that's actually pretty significant. They have something that looks like a strain relief here, but it isn't, doesn't really relieve much. So uh, it's, it kind of seems like a, a bit lighter weight, but nonetheless, it's neat to see that they've actually uh, listened to some of the criticism and upgraded that charger. And then, of course, the last thing in here, besides some tasty silica gel, is uh, just a shoulder strap. They figured that a light of this magnitude, you're really not going to want to have hanging off of your wrist just using a normal wrist lanyard. And they're advertising it as a like search and rescue light. So I can understand the shoulder strap. Now, let's see if they included. They uh, only included one <laughs> keychain ring instead of two, which seems uh, a little bit odd, but... Let's take a look at this strap to tell you the truth. Unfold that. How's the connection? Oh, I see. So it has a kind of a unique two prong thing. That's what's going to fit up in here like so. Come on now. So that's going to fit up in there. And then the keychain. Is just going to be so this back end can snap back here. I do have this battery uh, threaded on pretty tight so it is nice to see that they didn't make an attempt to make it so when it stops or bottoms out that this kind of is in line with the power button in the center line of the light. And we do have our obligatory bag of uh, repla replacement uh, button sponge, a couple replacement o-rings, a couple replacement uh, charge port covers. Let's pull off this back cap and then we'll go out and test this thing. Pretty stiff o-ring although it's pretty cold where I'm at so makes the uh, grease just a bit stiffer. So they do do the kind of the funky thing where they're using these 21700 cells I will mention that this is all like a billet machined piece. It runs these all in parallel, so it's actually <laughs> a 3.6 volt fast shot, but it just pulls a ton of amps. But what I was noticing, and I thought for the retail, $260 for this flashlight, it's protected 21700 cells, but they're only 4,000 milliamp hour. They're not using the 5,000 milliamp hour ones. They should include the 5,000 milliamp hour ones. One thing I was noticing is this is out of the TT20. 
and this is like a real proprietary design where it's like impossible to find replacements. At least on this one, they're using protected cells, but they are just regular button top, or they're not flat top, that's really regular, but they are button top cells. They still are strange where they have the positive and then a negative terminal around them. But as we can see, what's happening is just the four positive terminals are just engaging in this ring here. And that's so you can get, you know, really good contact. And so fortunately, you can get other 21700 cells that are button top and be able to use them. They're on the early ones. They've had this flashlight, the V1, since about 2017. And so it seems like they've modified it. There's issues with this plastic ring being too tall, so you couldn't use aftermarket cells. Now we can see that that plastic ring is uh, much shallower, and so you should be able to order just any old button top 21700 protected cell and uh, swap these out for higher discharge ones. Nonetheless, that is 16 amp hours or 16,000 amp hours of uh, cells in this flashlight which is not insignificant. Fortunately, there is other provisions, so you can kind of mount what you want. The way this clip goes into here is a little bit funky, but it is a through hole, so you can do some other options there. But I do like the way this ring can sit in there like that. And then we can snap this in there, like so. The cover is a little bit hard to kind of get open, to tell you the truth, although I appreciate that because you're not going to uh, be accidentally popping this open. It is IPX8 rated. There we go. And so we do have USB-C charging. And once again, it now comes with a 5 amp charger. So this thing, 16,000 milliamp hours at 5 amps. Uh, we're looking at around an average of a three-hour charge, down from one, eight. So at least they improved that from the early versions. So anyway, and I guess the last thing to talk about, kind of wish we had a little bit more flex with that portion there. This is indeed the big brother to this, the Catapult V6. Which already is. For most people, this is going to be great. This is going to be the spotlight long throw flashlight that people are just going to be uh, totally happy with. But if you really need, you know, or a flashlight aficionado or really want something that has really extreme reach, uh, it's going to be hard to beat something like this. There's only a few. There's it appears to be maybe five to ten manufacturers in the world. Oh. Oh, we have a little booger there during the machining process. Uh, but only five to ten manufacturers in the world uh, are somewhere around there, you know, maybe a dozen, that even make flashlights that are of kind of this caliber. What's interesting is they even overrated because it says right here max four amps type C charging. So uh, I didn't actually, I had charged this before I started the video, but I didn't unpack its own charger so it's interesting to see that they included such a high power one i charged it with the samsung uh three amp and it only took about maybe four and a half hours four hours but the batteries weren't fully discharged so anyway i guess the other thing to mention about this unit is as you saw it did not come with a case and even though this is a pretty decent this is a tempered glass lens, so you can, are going to be able to clean. It's going to be more scratch resistant. Obviously, if you drop this thing like on gravel and it hits that, <laughs> it's going to break the lens. Okay, here's a quick comparison at my schoolyard distance. I'll say this is maybe five to seven hundred feet. We'll be doing another more long range test, but I'm going to compare it to the Catapult V6. This will be on. Well, first we'll just do normal mode. There's the Catapult V6, you can barely see it. Now here's low on the TN42, quite a bit more power. Now let's do turbo on the Catapult V6. The Catapult V6, because it has a shower lens, actually has just a little bit wider beam, but still, pretty darn bright. But compared to the, the four inch lens on the TN42 on turbo, you can just see this thing is just a ridiculous. <laughs> That's something you'll, ang you'll piss off the neighbors with quarter mile away all right here's the catapult v6 really not too bad but then compared to the tn42 
I mean, the TM42 is crazy. All right, here's some sky shots. Once again, this is the Catapult V6. And then the TM42. It's big lens. It really has a lot of concentration. Now, if we look out here, you can just start to make out those trees out there. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. Really pretty darn surprising. That, I don't know what that is. That's probably 2,000 feet. It's about a third of a mile, maybe a quarter of a mile. About one of the best distances I can really uh, do. And wow, this is a concentrated light. I can see why they call it a search and rescue just because uh, you can see so far with it. Man, if you're up close and it reflects off of something, it's really going <laughs> to blind you. So, in summary, don't know uh, really what else to say. Pretty decent build quality, glass lens, uh, a whopping 16 amp hours or 16,000 amp hours of battery of 3.6 volt battery capacity. And I think a SBT 90.2 LED, which is uh, a pretty modern element. Let's take one more. We'll take a real close look at the look at that. Come on now. That is a pretty bright little LED element. Anyway, kind of like the wrist strap. It's not so heavy that, or the shoulder strap. It's not so heavy that you couldn't use it with the wrist strap, but it would be awkward. And it's nice from the V1 to see that they've upgraded to a five amp charger on this one. So it actually will charge within a reasonable amount of time, three or four hours from empty improvements one since they're all the four cells are running in parallel it does not balance the batteries and probably every 30 to 50 charges i mean either you want to get a four bay charger that supports protected 21 700 cells because they are extra long no charger i've uh, gotten so far actually will support protected 21 700s would have been nice if they include the the 5,000 milliamp instead of the 4,000 milliamp hour cells because then it would have been a 20,000 milliamp or 20 amp hour light. But you can always buy better cells later. The only other way to balance is since they are all running in parallel, you would periodically spend some day that you're going to be spending at home. Uh, you would have to do some kind of operation essentially uh, after you run it down is take this off and pull out all the cells except for one and then actually charge one cell individually after the other. The reason balancing is important is because when they're running in parallel, whatever cell comes up to the top voltage, the 4.2 volts or whatever it stops charging at, that's what's going to trigger the charger to stop sending power. And some of the other cells may not actually even be fully charged at that point. In most cases, it's uh, it's fine as long as you're not running them down, you know, to where they're empty. But periodically, you know, depending on how much you use this, it might be every three months, six months, uh, even a year if you're not going to use it very often. You'll want to go through the process over a day of trying to charge each cell individually so that they can get balanced out. No electronic lock. Through Knight really needs to standardize on having some kind of electronic lockout. That would be nice. And then lastly, I'm surprised that this V2 does not have a variable output mode. It is only stepped, you know, low, medium, high, and then turbo, and then the press and hold one lumen firefly mode like this. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.